have done what has not been done in centuries. All the parts of the orrery have been placed within the chamber, and Derenith awaits us below. I must admit to being more than a little excited. I've never seen the orrery operational. Not much. You've done extraordinary work, and just in time for Queen Irene's arrival. Imagine the chance to see the orrery operate. Conservator Dereneth is preparing Queen Irene as we speak. We should really head in there and get started. The ratification ceremony isn't going to perform itself after all. And from what I understand, Conservator Dereneth wanted to speak with you personally. Do not want to cross me. I'm an old Mary Vicereve, an assistant to Prince Naaman himself. Why am I barred from the ceremony? Little brother, you shouldn't be here for this. Dereneth warned us of the dangers. I'll make sure everyone clears out, as you requested. But you don't need to be here, your highness. I used to sneak in here as a child and climb through the orrery's rungs. Do you think I'd pass up on the chance to see what it actually does? But have no fear. I want you at the outer door. Strange to see you after South Point. Not bad, just strange. But no matter. I can hardly believe we're about to breathe some life into this old girl. And before you ask, yes, I'm speaking of the orrery. Almost. You recovered the pieces needed for the orrery's activation, so it's only fair you're here to put them in place. So... I should be the one to ask. Are you ready? Good. The first thing you'll need is to take up Rachin's mantle. A god's hands move the orrery, goes the translation. But that's a load of boarslop. You simply need to be in three places at once. Rachin's mantle should allow for that. Approach the pillars beyond the orrery itself. You must activate each in turn while keeping one thought in mind. When you wear Rachin's mantle, you'll never be held in place. From what I understand, it should do the rest. So, this pile of moss and rubble determines the next Emperor? The orrery is ancient. Show some respect. It's magnificent. Nearly there, Your Majesties, Your Highness. <laughs> That's it! It's working! It's actually working! Here, take hold of the heart of a numeral. Place it in the pillar next to our royal observers. That should do it! Awaken the orrery, whatever that truly means. But have no fear. This contrivance allows me to manipulate its energies. This means I can keep Queen Irene safe when she steps inside. Now go! Place the heart of a numeral. Let's see what all the fuss is about. And now 
the Aelid death trap will tell us if we have an emperor in our midst. Truly a momentous day. Naaman, now is not the time. Iren, there's always time to protect you from yourself. For how could I let you risk your life in this contraption without testing it first, dear sister? When you wear Rotchin's mantle, you'll never be held in place. It's incredible! I can see the White Gold Tower! No! What's happening to me? Ah! No! You tricked me, sister! It's your fault! Vermin! All of you! I'll kill you all! The tower is fading. Naaman, what were you thinking? Why? What? No, I... Why would Naaman do this? I made him a part of what we were building. Tried to show him this is about more than just our people. I would have all of Tamriel be our people. What the legend says, it revealed the person within, as it will do to me. Do you think I have a choice in this? I will enter the orrery as I swore to the people of the Aldmeri Dominion. I must learn whether I'm fit to lead them. And if I'm not, if I'm changed as my brother was, I can't become a danger to the people I've sworn to lead. Do you understand me? I must not delay. I'm... myself, aren't I? A dominion of peace. The fair and just rule of Tamriel, beneath an old Mary banner. A future I hope to build. And you, standing at my side. Come, help me build the future. I don't intend to tell anyone what my brother did. As far as I'm concerned, he died trying to help me, not usurp my throne. The Staff of Magnus. A powerful object with the ability to suppress magic. Dangerous were it to fall into the wrong hands. Luckily, we already possess it. Go to Marbrook in Eastern Greenshade. Speak to Captain Sarandil about securing the staff. I'll follow soon after. We heard sounds of battle. What happened? There was an accident. My brother gave his life to protect us. He died a hero. I... I don't... I will soon go to Marbrook. Vice Reeve Peladil, I want you to travel ahead with my brother's body. You will make the funeral arrangements. Yes. Yes, your majesty. I understand. Spare no expense for his funeral. All in the Dominion are welcome. All may pay their respects to a hero. At once, your majesty. Is this really happening?
This is just awful. Who are you? What do you seek? It's Gurwe Ruin's duty to send those who measure up to our standards. She doesn't take her task lightly. Know that this is Brackenleaf's forest and we are his briars. If you want to join us, you'll need to pay your respects. Brackenleaf is one of the first trees of Grotwood planted by Efre herself. Brackenleaf's briars are sworn to protect Brackenleaf from an enemy called the Outsider and accept all who want to follow the path of the hunter. Curious one, aren't you? That's knowledge for Brackenleaf's briars and us alone. Now, if you're interested in joining, not everyone's cut out to be one of Brackenleaf's briars. We've dedicated our lives to studying the relationship of predator and prey, to becoming skilled hunters, and above all, to defending Brackenleaf. Many who undertake our trials do not survive. The first test of the briars is to listen. Each of the masters has a lesson to teach about the hunt. These are the rules the briars live by to live off the flesh, to bring no harm to nature, and to protect Brackenleaf with our lives. One step at a time. Visit the three shrines, Snake, Wolf, and Tiger. Light the brazier at each shrine and listen to the masters. Then, if you still want to be a briar, return to me and I'll explain the next trial. Joining Brackenleaf's briars is nothing to take lightly. Many have died attempting the trials, and there is always the threat of the outsider. What would you like to know? Old songs speak of days when Ifre walked among the trees of Valenwood. She planted the seed that would become Elden Root, but what most don't know is that she planted many more. Brackenleaf was one of those seeds. The first briar was a skilled hunter called Thaldil. She single-handedly protected Brackenleaf from being destroyed by Colovians during the Imperial occupation of Grotwood. She followed the guidance of Brackenleaf and established the briars. We are protectors of Brackenleaf, and through him, servants of Ifre, who created him. To involve ourselves in politics would only corrupt our mission. That said, we have no quarrel with Queen Irene or the Dominion. Brackenleaf's briars are any who can prove themselves worthy by passing the trials. The trials do not distinguish between the races of Tamriel, and neither do we. You already know the Outsider is our greatest threat. Beyond this, some secrets are meant for those who pass the trials and join our number. I am the snake. I hide in the tall grass and close on my prey with lightning speed. I'm cunning, agile, and fierce. Watch. My prey does not see me coming until it's too late. Deceive and strike. The way of the snake is dark and calculated. Remember this. I am the tiger. I use brute force to destroy my prey. I am strong, proud, and fearless. I stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with my prey and deliver a ferocious killing blow. Use superior strength to overcome your prey. The way of the tiger is to dominate, 
Remember this. I am the wolf. I howl, and the rest of the pack responds. Sharp tooth and hungry, we hunt together. Working together, we take down the toughest foe. Hunt as a pack. The way of the wolf is to move in numbers. Remember this. So, you've heard the Masters speak. Snake, Tiger, Wolf. These are the spirits of the hunt. Each briar embraces the qualities of one of these spirits. Are you still interested in joining the briars? The next trial will not be so simple. It will require you to commit your whole self, mind, and body. Venture to the frog cave near the seashore. A rare breed of red frog, the Phalanesti peeper, lives among the reeds. Capture one and eat it. Yes, and it must be consumed alive. The frog will allow you to see the forest like you'd never have before. Once your journey begins, the spirits of the forest will guide you. Don't be alarmed if the world around you seems to change. It's a property of the Valnesti Peeper to reveal the true nature of the forest. But be careful. The true nature of the forest can be deadly. Curse my heart. Speak to me, friend. Don't be afraid. Don't worry. I'm a friend. The disorientation you're feeling is natural. It will pass. It's been a while since Glaris sent anyone here. She's been more cautious since the boy Erengor nearly died. Glaris and so many before her. This place was still young. It's time for you to speak to Brackenleaf. Only he can judge whether you are worthy to serve him as one of his briars. Find him in the center of this grove. If he wills it, we will meet again.
have to speak up. My hearing isn't what it used to be. And it was never very good to begin with. <laughs> no ears, you see. Oh, the Briars, you say? The Briars carry my heart within them. They protect it with their very lives. It's a lot to give to protect a tree, especially one as old as me. Tell me, why do you want to join my Briars? Good, good. I think you will find this forest is full of new things to discover. Never ate a frog and found yourself talking to a tree before, did you? <laughs> of course, not all the things you will discover here are safe. Are you prepared? Very good. I trust Glaris has told you about the spirits of the hunt. First, you must decide which fits you best. The snake's dark purpose, the tiger's grim determination, or the kinship of the wolf. Relentless and strong, the tiger stalks its prey without flagging and overpowers it without hesitation when the moment is right. The tiger's prey is the snake. To be like the tiger, you must hunt its prey. finished yet. Each hunter is also prey to another hunter. Wolf hunts tiger, and tiger hunts snake, and snake hunts wolf. It's not enough to hunt your prey. You must also prove stronger than those who hunt you. Your spirit animal's shrine lies at the edge of the forest. Light the brazier, and your predator will appear. Be prepared. Just as you stopped your prey, so your predator will pursue you with lethal cunning. When you are done, return to Brackenleaf.
Ho-ho-ho! Now you have seen how the roles of hunter and hunted are interchangeable. You have stalked your prey and confronted your predator. You are almost ready to become a briar. One last trial remains. As I've said before, the briars are my guardians. They protect my heart against the outsider. An enemy who wants to steal my heart at any cost. You are the outsider. Your final trial is to enter my trunk and touch the flame of my heart. The master... You have seen how the hunter is also the hunted. Well, in the same way, every briar begins as the outsider. A stranger who does not belong. Only by dying, or completing the final test, and joining the Briars, is the Outsider defeated. Are you ready? Outsider, you'll not get past me. The thing that matters is bracken leaf survival. Leave this place. You are not welcome. The flame of my heart now resides within you. Carry it with honor and protect my forest with pride. I will now return you to Glarus. So you've returned. Tell me, what did you see? Did you speak to Brackenleaf? Everyone's vision is a little different, but we all must take the heart and experience the role of the Outsider. You stopped being the Outsider when you proved yourself strong enough to defeat the Masters, and Brackenleaf offered you his heart. The Masters you fought were illusions, but they fought with all the strength of their real counterparts. Tell me, what spirit animal did you choose? Go to the Tiger Shrine. Pray at the Brazier and receive the blessing of Brackenleaf's Briars. Then return to me for the final rite of initiation. You've been gone a while. I'm glad you made the Mayor of South Point pay for his crimes. You have the blessing. Good. Then with open arms, I welcome you to our family, Brackenleaf's Briars. May you succeed in all your hunts, and the great tree keep you in the shade of his leafy branches. You may return here as often as you like, and anywhere you see the shrine of the tiger, you may seek Brackenleaf's blessing. Congratulations, friend. My friend Feralian has gone missing, and I'm worried he got himself into trouble inside the cave to the north. It's my fault. 
I was going on and on about a silk dress I saw on a high elf in Elden Root the other day. Fraelian swore he'd get me the dress. I didn't think he'd venture into a cave full of spiders to do it. I think Fraelian hoped to gather their silk to make the dress. Foolish elf. There are stories about a spider the size of a bear and twice as fierce that makes its home there. Oh gods, if something happened to him. Please, look for Feralian in the cave to the north, but be careful. I couldn't bear it if something happened to you too. Aye, the fearful matriarch of the spider den. They say she's a thousand years old. Call her the Spider Queen. It makes my skin crawl just thinking about it.
I thought I was food for sure. Thank you. We should get out of here while we can. Thanks, friend. I was this close to becoming those spiders' next meal. At least I managed to gather some silk for Mendil. She'll have her dress yet. She deserves it. I wish there was something I could give you by way of gratitude, but I'm an elf of little means and this pittance is all I have. It'll have to be enough. Thank you. refuses to trade with arrived in the nick of time.
Thank you. I can make it back to camp from here. before any more of them return. Research. All I want to do is research. Why do I always end up in life or death situations? Either in Darwin's cursed or I am. Shades boiling up from the ground? What next? Trolls in heat? We were excavating for artifacts when Dominion soldiers showed up, demanding we turn over anything we'd found. And Darwin showed them what we had, but Lieutenant Urion insisted we work faster. No protocols, no safeguards. I have no idea. The Mages Guild has procedures for a reason. Not that the soldiers listened. We found an ancient scepter made from bone. But before we could properly contain the artifact, one of those idiots grabbed it. That's right. And if it weren't for you, I'd have joined them. I'm heading back to our base camp. You should speak with Andarwin if you think you can help sort out this mess. You can't be any worse than Lieutenant Orion. What are you doing? That's not your property. That bone scepter is the only thing of note we found. There's no end of trouble since we pulled it from the ruin. It's not dangerous, not directly. What I mean to say is that holding it won't rot your hand off. At least not immediately. It summons all the shades, I suspect. It certainly doesn't control them. Not that I've found anyway. Although, hmm... The markings carved into the scepter are all alien for Pale Sentinel. Could that mean the creature at the heart of the ruin? It's the only shade we've heard speak, though it mostly just wails. It is rather pale, come to think of it, and the scepter works obsidian into bone, which is an old form of necromantic control. If that shade is in fact the Pale Sentinel, that bone scepter may have some control over it. And if it's directing the rest of the Shades, perhaps you could force it to stop. Besides, we can't allow Telekar's ancient traps to remain active. Not this close to Elden Root. He was a necromancer, one of Manamarko's most talented apprentices. But he and his wife Vestari eventually left Manamarko's tutelage. It isn't entirely clear. There are many theories, but they all boil down to a difference of opinion seems to be the way of things with necromancers. Leave this place! I won't let you wake him! Scepter. No, please, don't wake him! Stop! Don't make me go back! I was so close to escaping him forever! Telekar. A bad man who sleeps inside these ruins. When he wakes, I'll be trapped here forever. I'll do everything I can to get away. I did not! Telekar's servants hurt those people! They don't like you if you aren't from here. 
When he wakes, he'll control them completely. Just like me. The Bone Scepter holds power over Telekar's monsters. Over me. I can't lie to you. Besides, lying is wrong. One of Telekar's victims. But I don't have to be. If you can free me before he wakes, I'll leave. Then he'll go back to sleep forever. Hooray! Follow me inside the ruin. We don't want the Shades to hear us. They're his spies, you know. Shh! Be quiet in here. Telekar's servants don't like things with blood inside them. And they really don't like noise. There's a big sparkly door inside the Constellation Room. It's this big lock Vistari made, to keep him asleep inside. She doesn't come around anymore. I think that's why the door isn't so sparkly. Telekar's wife. They fought and fought, because he was a bad man, and she was a good woman. But she thought she could change him. When she realized he'd always been bad, she locked him in here. But the lock grew weak, and now he's waking. Vistari left three of the things we need in special rooms around the ruins. The fourth is stuck inside some of Telekar's servants. If you smash them open, I won't tell. But about all the pieces, I, I don't know how to make them work together. I'm sorry. That's easy. The morning room, the smelly room, and the forbidden room. But don't worry. I can keep you safe. We should just go there. I'll point out what we need. I can distract Telekar's servants. Point the Bone Scepter at one of them and I'll blind it. Then you can smack it until it falls down. Don't worry. It's not like you're hurting it. They get back up again, eventually. Oh, all right. The most important thing is the book Vistari wrote in when she locked the door. We need to find that so we know what to do in the Constellation Room. There's an old skull Telekar stole from Menomarco. Then there's a glowy vial. I don't know what's inside, but if you listen real close, you can hear whispers. Oh! And the Milky Rocks. You'll find those inside some of Telekar's servants. Behold. Forbidden room. I come here to think sometimes. It's where Vistari left the book she wrote in when she put Telekar to sleep. Room. That glowy vial at the hallways when Vistari carried it back from the Constellation Room.
nothing like the morning room. All the servants used to live in the cages. But Fastari brought that old skull back here. I'm sure of it. That's the last of them. We have all the pieces. We should go to the Constellation Room and put Telekar back to sleep. Vistari had when she made Telekar go to sleep. You have everything Vistari had when she made Telecom. Happening. I think it's working. Who are you? How dare you intrude within my What? It's no! You. Let me go! You there! Explain yourself! What are you doing in my home? Who are you? Why have you invaded my home? The shades defend my home from thieves. Neither I nor my servants bear any interest in the living. My work concerns one who died long ago. And now, I would know why this creature travels with you. Simple-minded thing. Those wards have contained me for decades. I remain within by choice. Now, I'm at a critical juncture in my research, and I need this creature to complete it. If you interfere, I'll drive you from my home. Now, be gone. No, please! I don't want to stay here! You dare interrupt me? Kalian, my son, see to this intruder.
Again, you trouble me at a critical juncture. What must I do to hasten your departure? Attempting to restore my son, despite your interruptions. That creature is a piece of him, an imperfect piece. If I reunite flesh and spirit, I can revive my son. He's my son. I'd do anything to restore him to a fraction of himself. With refinement, I can make him whole again. Vastari thought this hubris. If she hadn't left this world, I'd try to make her understand. That we could one day be a family again. I needed time to refine my methods, and time I have had. And now, I have his spirit. I don't wish to harm this creature. But without the Bone Scepter to control it, I must resort to cruder methods. You what? That scepter is crafted from my own bones. It can bind the creature to his immortal husk. Once Kalian's wounds knit, I'll summon him here. You must bind the creature to his husk, set things to how they should be. No. You feared I would raise an undead army to march through Grotwood? My wife and I spurned Menemarco for a reason. But in return for binding this creature to my son's husk, I pledge we will remain within our home forever. He was young when he had his accident. Too young. The creature you've met can't fully comprehend the world around it. Unless properly supervised, it could harm itself or others without knowing what it did. No, to set it free would be a cruelty. I broke through Vastari's ward just under a century ago. I have remained here ever since, attempting to restore what remained of my family. I will never leave, as long as Kalian remains at my side. This is my... Kalian is my son. I needed all his remains to craft the husk, so I had to use my own for the scepter. To command a spirit, use a focus made of its bones or those of its close relatives. Basic necromantic principle. Please, you can't make me be a monster again. I don't want to be here anymore. It hurt when I was a monster. It hurt worse than these chains. I want my father to sleep so I can go away. I don't know. I wish you could use the bone scepter on him. Point it at his body, there on the throne, and tell him to go to sleep. Then I could finally leave, far away from here, somewhere safe and warm, somewhere where I'd have friends. Are you... What? You did it! You did it! I'm free! I'm finally free! Thank you. Thank you! I don't know. But whatever it is, I'll be far away from here. Telecar can't hurt me anymore. Here, I can open a portal so you can be with your friends. Tell them I'm sorry about the Shades. As long as they stay away, they should be fine. I'm telling you, if I still had hair, I'd be completely white!